Okay, we're rolling. All right, this is an interview at the New Scotland Historical Society, 27th of September, 2007, approximately 11.30 a.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Uh, Kenneth George, <coughs> uh, born Brooklyn, New York, uh, August 29th, 1925. Okay. What was your educational background prior to going to, into the service? High school. Okay. Do you remember where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Uh, yes, I do. I was in high school. In the high school classes. I had about it. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your reaction at all? It really didn't hit me. It did not make an impact. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize what the ex, you know, extent of Pearl Harbor was at that time. Mm -hmm. okay. Did you enlist or were you drafted? I enlisted. Why? When I was in high school, I took a test to qualify for the Army ASTP program. I uh, passed it and after I graduated from high school, I enlisted to get into that program, mm -hmm. which was to train me to be an engineer. Mm -hmm. So, how long did you last in that program? Six weeks. And it was? I took my basic mm -hmm. at Fort Benning. Okay. While I was at Fort Benning, I fractured my wrist. I did not go to have it examined until basic was over. By that time, the bones had wore away and my wrist had to be put in a cast. After basic, I was transferred to Carnegie Tech in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in their engineering school. Mm -hmm. Lasted six weeks. I was doing quite well at that, but there was a manpower emergency at that time, and they dissolved the whole program. Mm -hmm. We have very seldom interviewed anyone that completed the program. Oh, okay. <laughs> so whereabouts did you go from there once that program ended? Went to Camp Pickett <coughs> in uh, Combat Engineering Basics. Mm -hmm. I went through two Combat Engineering Basics because of my wrist, which was still in the cast. I could do certain things, but the fractured wrist prevented me to do all. Mm -hmm. Two of my outfits were transferred overseas. At the end of the second basic, I was transferred to the Air Force to be reassigned. From there, I went to Wake Cross, Georgia. Now, did you request to go into the Air Force, or no. the no. Army just decided that's they where you were going? Yes, they just reshuffled the manpower, and I don't know why I was sent to the Air Force. Mm -hmm. but at that time, I went to Wake Forest, Georgia. I did not have any training background as far as the Armed Forces were concerned, except what I got in basic training. Mm -hmm. So I was assigned to an Air Force, an airplane graveyard, where I was given a toolbox and uh, proceeded to take off spare parts off damaged airplanes. They were short of mechanics on a crew, so I was placed on a crew. No formal mechanical background training, but I was part of the air airplane crew. Mm -hmm. uh, the war was winding down along about that time, and I was transferred to uh, Jacksonville, where I was part of the alert crew. That about ended my... What does alert crew mean? The alert crew was... <laughs> take care of transit airplanes that came into the field. You had a jeep, 
No, this was Jacksonville, Florida. This was Jacksonville, Florida. You had a Jeep with a big sign on the back, follow me. Mm -hmm. We'd go out, park the airplanes, gas them up, uh, take care of whatever needs to be done at that time. That about ended my, that took two and a half years to do all of that. Wow. Uh, <laughs> So you stayed in the States? The I stayed in the States all of the time. Uh -huh. um, my only regret was not being able to advance my status in the service. What and rank were you then? When you PFC. Uh, and I got a good conduct medal. <laughs> that was about it. <laughs> um, and I think it was because of the dissolving of the program and the fractured wrist uh, being shifted from one basic to the other and mm -hmm. finally putting me someplace where I could just do something. That was the extent of my answer. I do not regret any part of my service. I was a young kid, did not mm -hmm. leave anything behind. I was 18 when I went in. Yeah. When I came back out, I was married by that time. But I had the GI Bill. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, how did you, how did you make use of it? Pardon? How, what did you, how did you make use of it? What did you I do? went back to my old neighborhood, which was the south end of Albany. I would not have been able to go on to college, but I did enroll in Albany State. And went through the college, uh, received my teaching degree ended up before us by teaching. So that was a big plus. Mm -hmm. Did you use it for anything else? Did no. You, did you ever use the 5220 club? No. Did not have to do that because <coughs> there were plenty of jobs available mm -hmm. when a man came out of the service. So I worked for a while before I started college. Okay. Did you uh, join any veterans organizations? No. Did not. Stay any, away. I know you kind of jumped around, but was there anyone in service that you stayed friends with? Or? No. And I regret that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because I never stayed with one outfit mm -hmm. very That's long. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. I met some good friends. I played on some basketball teams where we got pretty close. I played on a um, softball team at Wake Cross, Georgia that won the third Air Force uh, tournament. We were the champions of the third Air Force. Mm -hmm. Now, by doing that, I met certain people, but I did not stay long enough. Mm -hmm. And also, most of my classmates in high school went into the service. And by that time, by the end of the war, they had drifted to all parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Although I still keep track of my high school class. Now, your wife, did you meet her where you were stationed, or was she from around here? No, she was from around here. Uh, she went to Albany High School. I went to Phillips Skyler. Met her out at a summer camp when we were 11th graders. And we've been together ever since. Uh, had three boys. The fact that we had two boys while I was in college <laughs> was a struggle. But no regrets, mm -hmm. except for not being able to possibly get more training, more advancement in the service. Mm -hmm. I probably would have stayed in the service if I had completed the engineering. How do you think, I think you basically have told us this, but how do you think your time in the service had an effect on your life? It taught me how to get along with very little, mm -hmm. and taught me how to get along with all types of people, and uh, it, it, it matured me. Got rid of my wanderlust. <laughs> So that when I went out, came out of the service, I was ready to 
settle down and do the things that I would like to do. I was always connected with young people, teaching at summer camps, you know, uh, summer programs, uh, winter programs that involve children and young people. So I continued to do that. And I think the service allowed me to sort of settle down. Mm -hmm. And then you said provided you that opportunity to go to college. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Are there any incidences or things you remember that maybe you want to add? Or? Little anecdotes or anything? Well, uh, not, not really. There were some amusing things. Uh, I did not have a driver's license when I was in the service. I knew the alert crew was good duty because you sat and waited. So when somebody said, does anyone have experience on the alert crew, I volunteered. <clears throat> and when they took me there, I said, well, there's one thing, I, I don't have my license with me. They said, that's okay. They took me into the office and typed out a license card. <laughs> I learned how to drive in a hurry. <laughs> I was taught by a lot of older people, I'm driving a double gasoline tanker truck out on the ramp to service an airplane. And an old timer stopped me and he said, hey son, he said, don't turn so sharply with that tank. He says, you're going to tip it over. So I was blissful of what I was doing and different people would help me get back to normal. The funniest incident I had, which is not, maybe not military, but I never had shrimp before. And I was put in Biloxi, Mississippi for assignment. They were famous for the shrimp, so I went and ordered shrimp. Large, beautiful shrimp, but they tasted terrible. And the waiter came over and he said, son, he said, you have to peel them first. <laughs> <laughs> I never had them before. So I learned many different things. Um, fortunate or unfortunate, I did not go overseas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay. We um, we interviewed.